Welcome to my lecture online. Now let's apply what we learned about enthalpy, the definition of enthalpy, and how the equation actually makes sense. Here that delta H is equal to delta U plus P delta V, where P delta V is the amount of work done by the system during the change or during the reaction. And let's apply it to a concept that we're all familiar with, the melting of ice. So let's say we have a small cube of ice that contains 18 grams of ice. So that's about one mole. One mole of ice is about 18 grams, which then means that it takes up a volume of about 19.63 cubic centimeters. Let's say the ice is at zero degrees centigrade. Now we add heat to the ice. We're actually causing a change in enthalpy. We're adding heat, so there's positive enthalpy, positive H being put in to the ice cube. As a result of that, if you put enough heat into the ice cube, the ice cube will completely melt Will, will now be water at zero degrees centigrade. Of course, now we need to put it in a container and we still have one mole of the substance, so we still have 18 grams, but now the volume has shrunk from 19.63 cubic centimeters to 18 cubic centimeters. So the change in volume is actually a negative change. We can pictorially see what happened here. We started with water, one mole, so maybe you should put in there that we had one mole of water in a frozen or solid state. We add heat, delta H required to do that is 6.01 kilojoules or 6,010 joules. And then we end up with one mole of liquid water at the same temperature. So it's heat absorbed by the system. Now we need to take a look at the term P delta V. So here we have a PV diagram. We know that we started at a volume of 19.63 cubic centimeters and we end up with a volume of 18 cubic centimeters. The pressure at which this happened was one ATM or one atmosphere and that should be an ATM. Let me try that again. There we go. And we know that one atmosphere is 101,325 pascals or newtons per square meter. If we now calculate the W, the work done by the system that is equal to the pressure times the change in the volume. The change in the volume, of course, is going to be negative 1.63 cubic centimeters converted to cubic meters. We have to multiply times 10 to the minus 6 because there's a million cubic centimeters in a cubic meter. So when we then calculate the work done by the system, we can see that it's negative work done by the system because actually the volume of the, of the water, the frozen ice, then reduces the volume down to water. Or matter of fact, let me say that better. When the ice melts, the volume of the ice cube is larger than the volume of the water, so the volume is reduced by the atmosphere pushing down on the system. And therefore, it's negative work done because it's the system do, is the atmosphere doing work on the system, not the system doing work on the atmosphere. So we end up with negative W or a negative 0 0.165 joules. Now let's put that in context with the concept of enthalpy. Enthalpy is defined as the amount of heat added or removed from the system. Delta U is defined as the change, the, inter, the change in the internal energy of the system, and P delta V is defined as the work done by the system on the atmosphere. In this case, that's not going to be a negative quantity. We know what the enthalpy is because we have learned from experimentation that it requires 6,010 joules to, to melt one gram of, or one mole of ice and turn it into one mole of water at zero degree centigrade. So then if we put the delta H, the enthalpy over here, and we then solve for delta U, we can see that delta U is equal to 6,010 joules plus 0 0.165 joules because of the heat added to the system by the work done of the atmosphere onto the system. So that adds additional internal energy. So the total internal energy change is actually a little bit more than the enthalpy. In other words, the pressure of the atmosphere pushing down on the ice while it's turning from ice into water, helped melt the ice. A little bit of the energy came from the work that the atmosphere did on the system, so not all of that heat had to be provided in terms of the enthalpy. We were able to give it a little bit less energy, a little bit less heat required to melt the ice, because the rest of it, 0.165 joules, was supplied by the atmosphere doing work on the system. And so, therefore, this term becomes negative, so the enthalpy required is a little bit less than the change in internal energy because the atmosphere did work on the system, providing a small amount of the energy required 
to melt the ice. And that's the relationship between enthalpy and the change in internal energy and how the term P delta V plays a role in either adding additional heat to the system or taking heat out of the system if the system expands and must do work on the atmosphere. And hopefully that kind of makes it clear on the difference between enthalpy, internal energy, and how P delta V plays a role in relating that to the two. And that's how it's done.